<laughs> What's going on, my man? I'm here with Dave Rocky, drummer of Sentinels. How's it going, man? It's going great, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, my man. So we're out here in my hotel room, glorious, out here in New Jersey. I was in the area, and I thought it'd be dope to chat with you. So yeah, we just got Collapse by Design, just came out. I've been loving the record. It's been fire. Awesome. I know it just came out on Sharp Tone, so it's the first release on Sharp Tone, right? Yes, and thank you. I appreciate that. Of course, my man. So how's that rollout process been? I know you guys have been on the road a ton. You've been touring constantly, I assume, or you have been for sure with Lorna, and then... Yeah, dude. How's it been? It's been crazy. Uh, the process of recording the album has been uh, pretty nuts. I mean, <laughs> it, it was delayed heavily due to COVID, you know, like right like smack dab in like the middle of the process, like of starting to track it is yeah. when like lockdown started hitting for the states. And yeah, it became a whole thing of, you know, well, you can only come to the studio if you're coming directly from your house. And that's it. Like, so I had to, I was in the middle of tracking drums and like I had a, th a deal with my boss where I, I would work until a certain time, but then I would leave. So I had enough time at the studio every day. So I had to like call my boss and be like, mind if I like not come in for the rest of this week until I'm done with this and then I can come back in. And, you know, by the time I did finish, I went back to my office and it looked like a fucking wasteland. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not sure if I can. Save. Curse it all, dude. Fuck yeah. it. It looked like a fucking wasteland. It looked like the scene in Walking Dead, like when Rick wakes up from the coma and like yeah. everything's gone. Like yep. nobody was left in the office. And I was like, guess I'll take my computer home. Guess we're going home. But um, aside from that. But yeah, so like things got a little bit more strict, like with the studio. So it also like prolonged our, our time in the studio instead of just like a 30, 31 day session. Um, and then like, you know, we lost our previous vocalist, Joe, like while we were in the studio not lost like death like we <laughs> parted i i keep saying that we lost <laughs> rest in peace joe love you man <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh joe God. i do love you in real life now that you're still yes. alive i'm very happy Nothing for you love for joe you'll be missed <laughs> uh but uh yeah so we had to now like also find a new guy while in yeah. the studio and like you know i i had to take on the lyrical aspect of that so i wanted to ask about that yeah so first off recording during the pandemic just sounds crazy both in the sense of yeah all the restrictions that are in place trying to figure out life i don't like what's beeping here give me one second universe I think yes it's GoPro, just being, fuck it. All right. um yeah recording during the pandemic just seems like a disastrous process like you said the restrictions are all in place you're uncomfortable there but also like uh, no one knew when it was going to end like i think mm -hmm. you hoped collapse by design was going to come out on a certain date and i assume it was delayed a little bit i assume it got fulfilled or pushed back but you're also in the studio working on this masterpiece like pouring your heart into something and you're going do we get to work with this like do we get to tour on this does this ever exist yeah it was it was crazy because like the like the tentative like release date like was august of 2020 so it was delayed a year and like almost three months and it you know so th that but the thing is though it's like when i look back on it it's like <clears throat> not to say that the pandemic was a blessing in disguise sure. but like it did you know help shape the record and what it was to become and so i think if we were rushed with like that 30-day confinement yeah. and like you have to get this done and like say joe didn't depart or whatever like then it wouldn't sound quite the way it does now and and you know we wouldn't have found josh and we wouldn't have this new uh i don't know i don't really know how to really describe that but like i mean overall it, it just it wouldn't be the same and we wouldn't have like the record the way it is today and like we wouldn't have been able to spend all the extra time on like the ambience like in those textures and like taking the extra time and like the mixing process and and for me to even like write the lyrics because i don't know how other vocalists do it like like my biggest inspiration is Brendan from Counterparts and End, and he says like that he doesn't write a, a single word until the music is finalized. Where it took me three months. That's weird. <laughs> and it was just because you know we were still trying to find Josh yeah. and uh, you know finish up final things. So like we had that time, but if it wasn't for you know if, yeah. if COVID wasn't a thing, it would not come out nearly as good like the lyrics would have been probably trash if i had to like write in like a, a two-week span so you still still living and breathing throughout that year it wasn't like you cemented it and then had a year of just sitting on a cemented record you were still tweaking it still going back in and changing certain yeah, things yeah we we had finished it like turned it into the label by the date <laughs> like pr pretty much like that date um or like around like september of 2020 and then like it it was like kind of getting the other things rolling like the music videos like coming up with the concepts for that because, you know, like we all expected, you know, it, it wasn't going to just go away like that. So we had all this extra time to really 
find good directors to work with for the videos and flesh out good concepts. And then, you know, the plan was to like put out a video and then just kind of like announce everything, like sign to sharp tone. Here's our new vocalist. Here's a new heavy track. Just, just hit them all yeah. with it. And then, you know, the rest of the stuff was still taking a little bit to get together, like the artwork, the packaging and all that stuff. So it, it, it all happened for a reason, and it wasn't like we were just sitting on it like, mm, yeah. we'll just release it when we want. Like We were dying to put it out, but um, we kept busy. I'm fascinated by things that got better during the pandemic. Like, obviously, so much went wrong, and it was horrible for so many people, and I never want to undermine that. But like, mm. yeah, like you said, this record became better because you had time to sit on it, and I assume just the universe being the way it was gave you plenty of dark shit to write about, gave you plenty of inspiration of... yeah yeah collapse by design like your collapse like the world was designed for you to collapse in those months <laughs> like it was coming true essentially yeah i mean like that's kind of what the the title is in it, it's like a, a look at the it, it comes from a lyric from atlas the last song but it really is like a look at all the different situations and all the different like heartaches and and uh, hardships that like i was dealing with and what i was putting onto paper essentially and it's like you look at all that and it's like it's like this person's life collapsing like it was meant to be that way like it was designed to be that way for for like this person this narrative so like that's essentially what it was and meanwhile the world was like it seemed like collapsing and it's yeah. you know it was kind of weirdly in sync in a way i yeah recording the record during the pandemic is bizarre and then touring on the record in the wake of the pandemic like we're past it so to speak like we are definitely better than we were six months ago or a year ago but it's still mm. relevant like as you're going through states you're still seeing all the different restrictions and i feel like that's fascinating this summer i was in uh i was in vegas and i was in la and you got to vegas and the pandemic didn't exist and in new england it was still like the thick of it and you get yeah. there and you're in the casino and it's just mm -hmm. life's open the world's open Everyone and it was, has their own like interpretation of yeah it, so it was bizarre and i feel like strange touring the country in this time you must see yeah you see florida and you see louisiana and then you're up in michigan and you're seeing all these different places <laughs> of like florida's what like their own country they're just like yeah <laughs> what's COVID, brother like we don't like they don't care like it's, yeah. it's pretty nuts like no offense to you guys yeah. <laughs> like it's pretty wild down there like people just walk like even in like August of 2020, like I was down in Florida and people were walking around like no masks, just like down the street, walking into restaurants. Yeah. I'm like, we're still in the first like six months of this shit. Yeah, dude. And like, whoa, like yeah. I'm on the plane, like double masking it. Like yeah. it, it's I was taking it very seriously, you know, and, and it's it's just nuts to see how different people were kind of taking it on, especially yeah. touring with it. Like, oh, my God, I was being extra careful. Like We were taking yeah. like like self uh like self-serve like covid tests like on the road and everything like because you know if we want to keep doing this we have to make sure our health's intact because yeah. the minute one of us is screwed then like it could send us all home yeah it gets but, weird in the package and everyone's rentals the lighting whatever other overhead gets built up like it yeah. can get very sensitive exactly. very fast yeah. yeah that's a weird world i don't know i i enjoyed traveling during the pandemic the little bit i did the one trip i took towards the end of it just in, like it was you hear the news you hear the universe like we have this sense of what the rest of the world's experiencing and to go to a different places be like oh this is what they're experiencing was kind of fascinating and mm -hmm. yeah i don't know some of it was what they said on the news some of what i didn't expect but yeah i don't know it was cool to just be there and be like oh this is this shit's different like this world is enormous and <laughs> yeah. we're a very little part of it that i'm comfortable in exactly um but i want to talk more about touring like i yeah the record's very dark in itself and it sound class by design obviously we've talked about the album title but the lyrical content itself dives into a, a deep place and i think a lot of myself i resonate with it like it i hear it and it just yeah hits a chord sometimes you just need to hear someone else in a similar place to you and i think it's fascinating you mentioned the yeah the lyrical background i think uh i think it's dope to put that much out there and i think it's also terrifying to put that much of yourself out there yeah and i mean it was something that like i felt was necessary to help our band connect with people on a, a yeah. more intimate levels because that was something that i always felt was like lacking with our band is that like like yeah there's no denying that our our band is like a musician's band for you got sure some riff. <laughs> there's there's a, there's some riffs here and there. i've heard a couple <laughs> and they're pretty scary yeah, right but like there's that part where you know i would always like look out from behind the kit because like as much as i love being a drummer like i always want to be in the front too like i, I can't deny that yeah. like every drummer wants to be in the front but yeah. like so i'm always looking for like people or i always was looking for people at past shows like like does anyone know the words like who's gonna reach for the mic and i like barely ever saw that 
like almost never. So that was one thing that I wanted to do is where like even if like there's only a handful of singles on this record, I want every song to be memorable vocally or I want there to be like I want it to be easy for people to digest what is being said and what's being spoken. And I yeah. want it to translate well. Luckily for us, Josh is very articulate, like with his like uh, with the way he screams, like mm-hmm. he is very uh, he prides himself on, on being um, enunciating. Well, yeah, this is enunciation. There it is. <laughs> dog shit <laughs> word, dude. <laughs> dog shit word. I, I can't think of the word enunciate. If you yeah. can't enunciate, you can't say the word enunciate. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just weird. Whatever. Yeah. And so, like, having him, you know, to be, like, that vessel for, like, yeah. the words for this album was, like, amazing. And, you know, I can't wait to see, like, what he writes about in the future yeah. as well. Um, but, yeah, that, that was just something. It, it was very terrifying to put that out there because, you know, if people are able to, like, see through, like, the, the meanings and, like, the metaphors or, or whatever, then, like, they'll probably be like, damn, dude's got some demons. I'm like, hey, we all got demons. Yeah. But, you know. I was I was glad that I can put it into you know this body of work because yeah. I I believed in this record and I knew that like it needed that extra little push on the vocals and like the lyrical aspect to really like you know deliver it home to people. It's interesting to me to kind of reverse engineer that like it it like it came from your heart came out of you but it came from a place of going how do I make the crowd have a better reaction? Mm-hmm. That's interesting to me because it almost I kind of like stand up comedy where it's like I tell the joke and I don't know how good the joke is until the crowd hears it. Yes. and I always. I guess in my brain, music is like, no, I make it in the studio and I just play it and that is what it is. And mm-hmm. to think of it as like, no, it is an interactive experience where you're communicating with each other and you are exactly. getting it back and to look for that feedback and try and seek deeper ways to gain feedback, I think is really interesting. Yeah, and just like a a joke, like not to say a song is a joke, but like to put it even like on that, that same level, like where just like a joke for yeah. a comedian, you know, you want your song and that message to land and you want yeah. it to stick with people. And so like, I, I love comedy and, and I... I it's like my second favorite thing right next to music. So like that is a, a very relatable approach is like you want that joke to land or you want that message or yeah. that line or that one liner or whatever it is you want it to, to stick with people. And I, that was like my goal for every single song, like yeah. writing it. Cause I feel like if, if you just like, I don't know. It's like that Ron Swanson quote. It's like, don't like half ass, like two things, whole ass one thing. Or yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to focus on this one and make sure yeah. Hell <laughs> that yeah. that's that, you know, that's the the goal. What a looking back at the record, it's 12 songs. Is that right? 12 songs. Yeah. 12 songs. What stands out to you? So I know you poured your heart into 12 songs. Like I'm sure each, each song has a pearl in it that you still like think about at night, but is like there a lyric one? or a- yeah. Is there a lyric, a sentiment, a theme, uh, an idea that stands out from a certain song or something that, it just resonates as like, I, I'm glad I wrote that. I needed to get that out of me somehow. Um, I, I think if I really had to like pull one, I guess it would probably be like, uh, the song embers because that song is the most like vulnerable I've ever been. And it was like the most like, uh, <laughs> what's that hand sweat at the same yeah. time, bro. I like that <laughs> yeah, maneuver. Get, get sweaty just, just thinking wild, about it. But yeah. It's, it's weird. Uh, that one was like, probably one of the most like troubling topics for me personally to talk about and it was but it was something that i was i was like i wanted to to be honest about like in my lyrics and stuff like that is you know because i'm like it's my chance to write so i'm gonna write about what i feel yeah. and like what the song brings out of me naturally and like it has like a very dark vibe to it but then there's also moments like in the the melody uh like like the guitar melodies and stuff like that that come out like pretty sad or yeah. like there's like a hint of like despair there and so like that there's like a, a couple lines um, like lost in the void of apathy, let the troubles uh, bring you to your knees. It's basically like the song is about like dealing with temptation and, uh, you know, like desire and lust and stuff like that and like giving into it and like kind of letting it destroy like what really is important to you. So it's yeah. like giving into like that temptation. It could be like drugs. It could be sex, like whatever. And it's like you can give into that, but it just think about what it's going to destroy like and and how much it's going to you know really take over and make you see past like what's really important because you're giving into stupid shit and that's like where like the whole reference of fire comes from it's like the fire like inside it's like i can feel it rising up again to a point i can't control it's just about like resisting urge and like and you're also like like pushing it down like as like a secret like you're like not telling yeah. people about it because you're you don't want to be judged yeah or you don't want people to look at you differently so it's like it's a really real thing that like 
a lot of us like men, women, like we, yeah. we all deal with that. Like we, it's just something we don't really talk about all the time Yeah. or like you don't talk about the extent that like you feel it and you're just like, man, like, or like this could screw up my relationship or whatever. And like, yeah. the, and that shit sucks. But like, that was something that like really weighed heavy on my soul. And I was like, all right, like might as well put it out there. I mean, it's yeah. an actual struggle so, and I can r- write about yeah. it. So, I mean, I just hope that people don't read that and go, <laughs> yikes dude i was uh, like come on <laughs> like, i heard something like, kind of similar articulated as like pleasure island like it's okay to go there and be amongst whatever your vice is but just be aware that you're in a place that's not sustainable and not permanent and yeah. like gotta be aware you're checked into somewhere and you gotta check out at some point and if you just stay exactly. on pleasure island for too long you're fucked <laughs> yeah, um but i think it's interesting i think especially on the road like it it feels like a lawless place a lot of times just because you're going from city to city like you don't have a home base that keeps you accountable or i feel like when i've traveled you feel like a nomad and yeah you you feel like like you're like it's like just another city to experience and like live it up in or or there was a a moment i was on the road and i remember like the first time i woke up in a walmart parking lot i was kind of like discerning and the Mm -hmm. third or fourth day i was like oh this is sick everything's right there and it was like this switch flip i was like oh shit this changes people and like i've been Mm -hmm. on the road uh, a month total maybe a week here a week there whatever so like i can't imagine how that scales by the time you're on the road 300 days a year, 200 days a year, where it's just, how do you, yeah, how do you keep that in check? How do you manage to find peace in a scenario like that? That's so unforgiving and so quickly moving. And so, uh, it leans so well in devices or whatever your negative thing is. Yeah. And it's like, it can be hard to get comfortable like yeah. on, on tour, like feel like at home. Cause like you're constantly just somewhere new. Yeah. Like you can find places that feel familiar or, or yeah. whatever can feel like home, but like it's not that common, or at least in, in my perspective. Yeah. And it's like you don't really have time to get comfortable because as soon as like you're comfy somewhere, it's like, all right, back to the van. You that found a good coffee city. shop up yeah, the road, and then right? it's like, oh, never going to go there yeah, again. Yeah, that's where you yeah. feel comfortable is the places that you can go yeah. to like while you're at home. Yeah. But, yeah. How do you how do you fight that? Like for me, yeah, finding comfort in those moments has always been a, a challenge, and I'm sure you've been on the road longer, so you've had more time to work that out. For me, uh, the challenge is always like it's the anxiety of being in a new place. And for me, it's always a physical thing. So I'm physically sick mm-hmm. and that's always like a, yeah. How do I present? Well, even though I don't feel well, but I don't actually feel bad. That's a stupid GoPro again. I'm sorry if that came through. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I make videos for a living bro. Nah, none of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for me, it's like a, it's a physical thing and it's, how do I, eat how do i become comfortable in this place and it's always a different rhythm of sometimes just honey nut cheerios like just the blandest thing i can eat sometimes just drink gatorade for a day it's always a weird thing and i think it's everyone kind of has their own way of finding some hint of comfort on the road i'm just curious what you've learned over your travels and yeah moments where you wake up in a city and you're like i don't i don't want to be here right now i i I think it's really different for everybody so it's hard to say like what the exact like secret is or for me like i don't know i just kind of i try to just put myself in my comfort zone so like you know when i'm in the van for long periods of time and like i start getting a little wound up i'll be like all right put the headphones in yeah put on your favorite album or put on your favorite comedy special or podcast and like do what like you know brings you comfort at home but like while you're away from home to like give yourself that little bit of normality yeah and so like i'll put in my headphones there like recently i just bought a switch so like i you know I'll, I'll put on the switch and like play a little bit kind of escape a bit and then or like you know try to like get lost in some sort of conversation if someone else is feeling talkative in the van it, yeah it, it's weird or like even when i get to the venue i'll do the same thing i'll like if i need to set up in a proper amount of time and but like be comfortable with it i'll pop in my headphones and like kind of shut people out like not like not like in a rude way but like just i'll kind of close myself off a little bit so i can just have that little bit of peace time or like go away and get something to eat like one-on-one or you know or if if i know that like i'm struggling with something right now and i know someone else is struggling i'll find the struggle bus and i'll be like or or i'll find the the party i'll be like come on the struggle bus let's go eat let's go talk it out or something just so like we're like helping each other out or something but yeah it's tough it's it's a a matter of adapting because you know in the beginning like i didn't know what the hell i was doing but yeah um it's just a like it's just time and repetition and like and you just kind of get used to the groove of it like and especially after being away from it for for us it was like two years for sure yeah but um like a year and a half for a lot of people like just jumping right into it again it feels like like your first time again 
Yeah. It's v- very much a, uh, there a is struggling no shallow process. water on tour. It's all deep water. No. Like you yeah. just leave home and you're just not home. Yeah, you dip your toe and then you're in yeah. deep in already. Yeah, it was that was one of my big takeaways from the first time I went. Was like, oh, you're just all of a sudden you're just not home. Yep. Like it's not like you go on tour and you get somewhere and tour like you just you're just not home and then mm-hmm. it begins and everything is just yeah we'll like, see what happens from here now like, yeah don't panic girls. You're, you're flying deep. home or something you know and then or you're, you feel like you're bringing the whole tour down or something like that yeah it's it's tough so it's like it, that's one thing is like you can't like know for sure like how into it you are until you're out there yeah you know it's like one of the things where you just you have to give it a try yeah. and if yeah you realize that it's not for you when you're out there then you know it's not for you yeah and, but if if you get out there and you realize that it's what you want like you just keep fighting for it and yeah. you just keep uh doing whatever you can to make it happen i think exactly on that note my last bullet point here is about going to europe and the, my little note to myself was it's crazy where drums cameras or any interest can take you mm-hmm. and yeah i think i have a similar i'm sure you have a similar story of learning drums in your basement and being taught by someone close and figuring it out mm-hmm. and yeah it's weird when i think back to buying a camera it's like i i got it just because i was like this seems kind of cool. I was kind of filming guitar covers. I was tired of using my laptop to film. I was like, yeah. oh, this probably could be improved. There's <laughs> probably a better yeah, camera right. in the universe. So I got it. And then it's like, yeah, now I'm here. We're in a hotel room because I was in the area. I'm in a different state doing this thing. Like, it's bizarre. Uh, yeah, it's bizarre how this nothing that you just decide, like, this is my thing and I'm going to invest everything in this and I'll mm-hmm. figure it out when I get there. Yeah. How that grows and culminates. And now, yeah, you're on the tip of going to Europe. Like, that's that's crazy. Like, to it is. hit something so well. Like, you're hitting, what is it, uh, a skin so well that someone takes you to a different continent? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's it's pretty wild. And, like, you know, I, I, I'll definitely say, like, all, all my guys, like, they they hit their things or, or pluck their things the right way sure. or, or yeah. say things the right way yeah and uh, you know I it it's it is pretty nuts you know to know that like the band is full of like committed musicians who have yeah. invested a good majority if not their their whole lives to do this and like for me it was you know being raised in like a pretty musical family like on my mom's side like my grandfather was a drummer and he played in like a ton of like cover bands like bar bands wedding bands whatever. And so, like, when I was born, like, I was pretty sure it was it was me, my mom, my, and my dad. We were all living at my grandparents' house, like, up until I was two or three. And, like, my grand, grandpa was just like, it's like, yeah, this guy's going to be a drummer, Cheryl, to my mom. <laughs> uh, he's like, he's going to be a drummer. I can guarantee it. And she's like, all right, if you say so. And, like, just naturally, like, you know, was in their rec room, That's I funny. would just, like, like, waddle my way over yeah. to the drums. And then... You know, he just saw that, like, I had a natural inclination to just, like, that's what drew my attention. Yeah. And then he just got me started, like, put me on his lap and then playing. And then, sure enough, by, like, the age of five, like, I was playing, like, Matchbox 20 or, like, yep. Sugar Ray Absolutely. songs. <laughs> and the bangers only, dude. Yeah, bangers only, like, 90s hits. And then I just couldn't, you know, work the foot. I yeah. couldn't reach. But, you know, the drive was there. And then, you know, sure enough, like, he bought me, like, my first kit when I was seven or eight. And then I just kept on going and i just i never lost the interest and like i had my my ups and downs with it where i wanted to like take breaks or sure give up from time to time but um i just kept going with it and then you know like when that opportunity to join sentinels came up like six years ago i i didn't even hesitate because like at the time i kind of wanted out of my band Mm -hmm. and you know i really enjoyed the learning curve and like the the amount of like perseverance I needed to like learn their songs. I was about to ask you, that's a tough band to jump yeah, into. And their first EP was fucking psycho. <laughs> so like I, I was not used to like that level of extremity, but like I knew I was like maybe like right on the cusp sure. of it. Like it was reachable. Yeah. It, it was like extreme to me or it was like slightly out of my comfort zone. So like I drilled those songs for like mm-hmm. two, three months and then like I got so familiar with them and then, meeting the guys and actually getting a taste of what it's like to be on the road with them. It was, it was such a great time that yeah. like I knew that like jumping into this band that I, I knew there was something special about the band. And I, I just, I've have been like fighting ever since I've been in the band to like, let's do, let's do this different or how can we make this bigger yeah. or, or whatever? Cause I just always saw big things happening for it. It was nice to know that like, I guess I wasn't really wrong. Yeah. Not to say not to make it like, here but like it was just you know now if we you can, don't say it i we're will going so. to, we're, we're, <laughs> thank you but now we can go to europe next year yeah. with, for an autopsy and that's yeah. mind-boggling so i like 
to know that like these goals were like you know obtainable and like it was possible it just took like the hard work and like the music like all working together you know and that's the hard work with it like you know it, it's anything can be attainable you just have to like really believe in it and i you really have to put in the work so like some people just like they'll feel like that plateau and they won't like they don't yeah. want to dig themselves out of it yeah they'll just kind of be like all right well this is it but you know you never know like you could dig that, yourself out and then like right in the horizon there is is the future that you want that ebb and flow is so brutal I, we always talk yeah. about uh, creatively i probably similar for writing i always talk about it in the context of photo and video of just like yeah sometimes you sit down and the edit just becomes a thing and take shape and sometimes you sit down and it's like how the fuck do i and it's like what's different like yeah, I, how do i, I transcend this yeah. yeah um i always go back there's like that shitty old meme online of like the guy mining and he's like one thing away from the diamond yeah. i always go back to that little like gives up like right yeah. before he gets there yeah, yeah. i've hit that so many times yeah um yeah i think you i've started to find some comfort that like it will always flow back the other way mm -hmm. so when it's down swing it's like Sit it out. It'll it'll pick up. You got to sit it out and keep working and keep pushing it and it'll come back. Yeah. And like I always used to look at things like from like a realist perspective, but like it really was like pessimistic. But with the title, like 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 yeah. psh, realist, yeah. like slapped over sure. it. But like now I am like more of a, an optimist and like a believer that, you know, not to sound cheesy or cliche, but it's like your dreams can't come true. You just have to really put in the work for it. Like you have to work for your dreams. Like you can't just like sit there and, and you know, wish it into existence, like, and not do the work. Like you have to follow it through. There was a period of the quarantine where I was sitting there learning Blender because it was, uh, yeah, I was home and I was like, how do I work remotely? Like my, my skill set was funded in concerts and live events and it was all mm. of a sudden it was like this doesn't exist anymore how do i keep productive yeah. and yeah those days locked in my room learning blender of just making a square for hours and it was just like this <laughs> these hours of like i'm enjoying this and i'm also miserable and this sucks but i'm gonna keep spending more time doing this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i just yeah i relate to that you listen to the first sentinels mixes that you got and being like i don't fucking know how this blast beat works but yeah, right? <laughs> i'll figure it out that's what i'm saying it was like you know uh even some of the things on this this record, I, like when given like the demos, I'm like, Chris, what do you expect from me, dude? This is crazy. But then like I, I you know, basically, you know, I've learned like MIDI, you know, programming. Yeah. I'm still not the best at it. And sure. thank fuck for our producer for like <laughs> helping me on things that weren't fully right. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, you know, you kind of whether it's like by your own hand or somebody like pushing you like. Like that's how you reach the new the next step, and that's why I'm so grateful to be in a band with with uh, with Chris because like his writing has always like pushed me like as a drummer and like has forced me to like adapt to to more extreme situations or like different things that like you know like I I think it's probably just because I'm so used to the hearing the songs but and like I've heard them for like a year and a half now before like everyone else or even two years with the demos and like when someone else hears it they're like dude that one part and I'm just like oh yeah, yeah. like yeah. now it's just like it's yep. like the back of my hand to me but like hearing yeah. that someone else is like flipping out over I'm like okay cool or they're just yeah. like dude it, it, the drums like sound better every album and like that's always sick to hear because I'm always afraid that I'm gonna yeah. like hit this point where it's like doesn't do anything for anybody yeah. anymore so like hearing that yeah. like you know chris like chris is pushing me like to learn these parts or like you know come up with something to to match his writing that gets better every time it's like we're helping each other out as musicians and like now like yeah. now i barely even have to touch the parts it's it's chris yeah. writing the drums guys that's the secret <laughs> so yeah i it's it's cool like having that that ebb and flow, like even with, with like another artist that yeah. like, you know, where you're just like, fuck, I don't know what to do. And then he's like, yeah. well, here's this. And then he's like, now I know what to do. And it like motivates yeah. you to, to learn something new or find a new way to do it. I, I love that bouncing back and forth. I'm fascinated by the idea of someone writing songs that you can't play and you have to figure out how do I play this and like make it possible. Mm -hmm. And for me, the video version is like, yeah, a client comes to me and is like, I want this. And it's like, ah, okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll, right. we'll make it happen. And yeah, then right. that process of figuring out was always terrifying and fun. And I can't but, even imagine like what you, like the, the notes like that you must get sometimes. Where it's just like, I want, it, I want these two clips to go into each other. They're fun, I'd be dude. sitting there like, like that, that corny ass gif of like <laughs> the baboon at the computer is just like on the keys. Like that's like, that's, that's how it I feels when, it when you get that note. Anything outside of drumming. I feel like an idiot. Yep. <laughs> hey, I, drumming is hilarious to me. It's, it just doesn't, I don't have the ability. Like I, I can play a guitar badly enough that I can imagine 
being somewhat decent at it mm -hmm. but i sit a drum set i'm like this this is doesn't no <laughs> like there's a button missing something's not right here do, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't add up i've tried yeah simple paradiddles a simple four right. counts and all this for some people it's it, like crazy natural yeah and then other people it's just it's so foreign where there's like i can't adapt where <laughs> it's like you you would look at a yeah. kid like me like like with like learning disabilities and like not the ability not to pay attention to shit. Yeah. Like that was like the one thing I understood. Yeah. It, it's so weird how that works. It's out. weird because it's, like, it's, it's math. Yeah. Like it's, it's, you can't do numbers math, but you can do this feel math. Exactly. And it's like, but the more you think of it, like it's math and it's like, you start to lose the fun where you're like, Oh, you're counting. Yeah. But like, for me, it's always been like a feel thing. Like I yeah. know there are numbers involved, but like I kind of ignore it because my brain doesn't work that way. Yeah. And yeah. I just kind of have to feel it. And yeah. when people are like, how do you feel this section? And I explain it to them. They're like, that's <laughs> fucked. And I'm like, I, that's what helps me learn. And that's my cheat, my cheat code. Absolutely, my man. Well, I appreciate your time, dude. That's about it. Hey, I think man. we're wrapping up. We're just about good on time. So I appreciate you coming out. Thanks for sharing what you shared. And yeah, look forward to chatting more with you. Looking forward to seeing you in Europe. Oh, seeing yeah, all man. the good content. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to your room. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck it. This Alrighty, we're fucking here. Yeah, this is going. Hell yeah. Testing. Yes, sir. Is mine still going? Oh. Whoop, whoop. There we oh, go. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. Here, yeah, I probably turn yours up now. Testing. There Fuck it. That's a little. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> All right, Alex. <laughs> I, yeah. think, I think we're good now. Yeah. Pretty even. Cool. Sweet. Cool, cool, cool.